Good morning everybody. It is 67 a.m. 5 degrees out. Trending to be sunny which is great. Let me show you outside. Got a uh, sun peeking through the trees there and a beautiful little bit of snowflakes coming down. I'm gonna get all bundled up and hope to catch that on camera for you. I've got only three amps coming in. Two amps but that's because there's snow on the panels I'm pretty sure so I'm gonna go out and sweep them off. Does that show up? There's these tiny little flakes falling down and glittering in the sunlight. Mostly clear. A little bit of haze over there yet. But these little flakes are coming down. I sure hope that shows up. It's really pretty. Little diamonds coming down. Well, look at that. I thought I'd had to sweep the solar panels. They were covered in snow last night. Just a little bit here. Anything that... uh covers a little bit of the panel will interfere with solar power production although there's these big fluffy flakes coming down right now so I seriously am considering getting a leaf blower right now I've got to clip that top branch right there because it's shading the tree in the morning so that's cutting out most of that solar panel there's uh, what's called blocking diodes on the back of a panel if any one row on the solar panel has any blockage on it, then that whole row will be blocked out and shut down so that the power being produced from the other row won't harm that. And right now, definitely that branch is blocking more than half of that solar panel. So that one is knocked out of, being, of producing power right now. I need to get up and saw off those couple branches and get more morning hour sunlight. You can see it clearly right now, the shading on that. And so half that panel is out, more than half, because uh, one, two, three, four out of six rows have shading on them. Last night I swept the pathways, but not to the solar panels here. It was really cold, and I was just doing it extra. And um, so I've got to do that and get these panels swept off for the electronic lab. Funny that these are covered in snow yet, but the others are not. Quite a bit of snow falls every night. I don't know where it all goes. It blows away to somewhere, but a lot comes out every day. This is overnight. Every day I shovel. Well, that'll help the batteries in the electronics lab. It's uh, getting more hazy though, but at least there'll be some power coming in there. 3.6 amps looking good on here now. So I feel comfortable with powering things off these batteries more and more now. They're starting to get, well, they're topped off. And today, while it is sunny and relatively clear and beautiful out, I am pretty sure if I start pulling a lot of current off this, the panels will compensate up to their capacity at this time. Well guys, I fired up the heater in the wood shop and I was going to make 
a um, box and after an hour and a half of struggling this is all I got put together in the shop and you can see my cut is horrendous and uh, crooked and terrible the problem is my Relby batteries some of you may remember from when I was in New York where it's not so cold as here the batteries don't like the cold well here in Michigan it's colder we're around 0 to 10 15 degrees all the time we have a high of, of um, in the teens this week and nothing's working even the saw um, I was having trouble and now it's warming up that was not happening outdoors now it's warming up even this was seized up all the lubrications all grease every single thing has been seized up and I think there was condensation inside as well now that works see I wasn't getting that this wasn't even reacting in my wood shop I brought in my impact driver earlier today for a project and it wouldn't do a thing I had one second and same here I would one second one second one second one second one second an hour and a half and I've cut four pieces of wood roughly slaughtered them basically so I've got my tools inside warming up and it's it's really frustrating because I really want to get the electronics box built today and it's ice cold everything's ice cold now this I brought in and I was gonna um, well I'll show you what I did I reinforced the stairwell with screws and same issue bzz, 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 and it was terrible so I had to let it warm up the stairwell was separating here based uh, due to Melanie going up and down and up and down and up and down and the nails weren't very firm so I hammered everything back in place and then put a screw in every junction on the stairwell to better secure it and and keep it from separating on us and I have gone ahead and strengthened every here was really bad so I've gone and strengthened all that but like I said I had to warm that device up and after I warmed it up it just went bzzz, right on through so definitely the cold is affecting my Ryobi tools and I cannot do anything right now until these warm up it is how it is so I'm wondering I may just end up putting a, a, a mat or something down here and working in the doorway um, sorry Melanie but <laughs> if we want to do anything around here that's how it is so it's just too cold to work not just for me but for my tools they're just not functioning nothing out there is functioning at all and I can't run my table saw same issue the everything is so cold and tightened up and the grease and everything is so tight when you turn on the table saw the surge is so high it blows out my inverter and I'm not able to run the table saw either so I'm dead in the water on projects right now unless I start working indoors so unfortunately that's probably what's gonna happen right now so when these get warmed up I'll get back to work I'm working in here on the table um, what I've done is screw the box together I drill everything and then I well I try to clean it up and put it in the trash can as I go what I've done is mounted on two uh, cigarette lighter with double USB plugs. They're two and a half, I think it was 2.1 amp uh, USB ports. So I'm going to have four USB ports and two cigarette lighter outputs. And then I've got a fuse block here. And what I've done is I've run the wires straight through. Um, going to be beautiful when this is done. And then I've mounted the fuse block. And then I ran the wire inside and back up. And then I'm going to put on a uh, crimp on connector here and then neatly feed that wire back through so all the wire will be inside the box and obviously my my box is not square I'm gonna to have to um, the saw wasn't cutting for anything so it's all crooked cuts so when I put on the back plate I'm gonna to have to straighten this out and I even have wire uh, what do you call it um, what do you call it for the wires to go through I'm gonna screw on this uh, yeah anyway I think the cold is frying my brain but anyway, the wires will be protected as I pass through here, and everything's going to be pretty nice. So this is the side of the box, actually. This is the top. There will be a handle on here, and then eventually I want to put quick disconnects on there.
but and I'll have a beautiful front plate with my AC power so I'll have DC and AC accessible on the front side got my crimp on connectors here and as they work I am copying my videos to the hard drive so I am multitasking here as we go and uh, use my time because there's still so many videos to do and yeah okay guys this is what I've got so far so I've got the um, USB and 12 volt plugs I put in a 2x4 in here and then I nailed in a actual um, official socket what do you call that thing I forgot what it's called but anyway I have the real deal in here and then I just got this sitting in here for now and I am going to cut a faceplate for this but my saw is not working yet it's still too cold and then over here I've got the the wires all beautifully done up even Melanie said this looks nice so that's a good thing if Melanie likes it then I must be doing the right thing and then I'm gonna make a faceplate for this once my saw is warmed up enough the batteries are just not not doing it and then a back board and then I've got these conduits that are going on there so that the wires are safe and happy well, that's it so far it's really really I've been four hours on this project and I've only got this it's just the batteries it's just been too cold but we'll get it hey guys well final thing I did tonight is I finished the Bedini motor and you'll see that on the do-it-yourself world electronics and at the very least it's an extremely cool and low power motor but it also is able to desulfate less lead acid batteries um, badly sulfated lead acid batteries and restore them and if you fine tune it it can do many other wonderful things but we won't talk about that on this video because some people get mad for some reason when I talk about the Benini motor um, some people deny it and say it doesn't work but well it's doing something well guys that is how I finish my evening I will get back to the electrical box tomorrow I have a lot of stuff to search I have to find parts for it tomorrow in the daylight and it's just uh getting really cold and dark out there so I just I don't have any light in the wood shop so we'll finish that in the morning and check this out if for those who are interested the running Bedini motor and how to put it together good night everybody I'll get this up to you guys Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project talk to y'all later